Hey guys, so in this video we're going to continue to work on the basal metabolic rate calculator because I want to show you a few more things in Python that we haven't yet covered yet. So a few new concepts, one of them is comments and the other one is how to take a user's input and actually be able to use that data in our program instead of having to just provide all the data ourselves. So let's jump into Python and I'll show you how that works. So here we've got weight, height and age, but what would be really good is if we could actually get the users to input that data instead of us. So at the moment we've just put values in so they're static values that won't change unless we change them, but what if we want to actually take the user's input? So we can do that by just saying input and that will allow us to get an input essentially. So we can save and run this to see what is going to happen. So now it's paused. So I could say 80 kilograms. But we get an error. So this is our first error but let's have a look and see how we could possibly fix this error because solving errors is going to be a huge part of programming. Uh, you know you'll encounter a lot of errors and some of them are going to take you a long time to solve but you just have to remember that the solution is always out there and if it's not then someone on Stack Overflow or something like that is going to be willing to help you so there's always ways of finding the solution and you just have to bear that in mind if you come across you know an error which you can't solve just as long as you stick at it you will always be able to solve it and that's how I like to think of it that's what keeps me motivated when I've been stuck on you know, a really difficult bug for the last six hours or something like that and I just can't solve it. But I just think in the back of my head, there is a solution to this problem and all I have to do is find it. So it's never going to be impossible, it's just sometimes quite difficult to find that. So with that said, let's try and have a look at how we can solve this error. So we can see this is the line that's causing the problem and the reason here is because the type is not right. So Python is quite helpful because it says it's a type error. So that means, like I was saying in the previous video, uh, you know, some numbers in Python are ints or integers and others are floats or floating point, you know, decimal numbers. Uh, so the way we can solve this is by using another uh, built-in function in Python called uh, int. So if we wrap the entire input, the user's input, in this integer function, what that's going to do is convert any input that the user gives us and make it an integer. So let's go ahead and run that and see if that fixes our problem. So it's asking for an input now, so let's go ahead and say 80. And there we go, it works. So that's great. Um, but that wasn't very helpful. It, it didn't really tell me what to sort of... It didn't prompt me with anything. It didn't tell me what it needed from me. I just had to guess. Uh, and the only reason I knew that this was weight in kilograms was because, you know, I've, pr I've written this program, so I know what needs to go in this variable. But it'd be really helpful if the program actually told us. So what we can do is in these little parentheses here, you can actually put a string. And in that string, you can say whatever you want. And that that's basically something that Python is going to say to the user. So we could say something like, enter your weight in kilograms. So let's try that. Eighty. And there you go. So that was a lot more helpful because it gives us sort of some information and then it's much more clear uh, we need to enter our weight in kilograms. Because uh, without that little bit of information the user wouldn't know what information it wanted from us. Uh, so let's just change this slightly, just format it slightly better. Um, with a the space there as well because you can see that there was no gap here and it just looks slightly nicer with the space 
and also what's called a, a new line character. Um, so backslash n is a special set of characters in Python. So what this backslash n means is if you think of the string, this is normally raw data which we just want to store in Python and we'll just have it stored in the computer's memory so that we can use it at some point later, in this case when we're asking for the input. But what the backslash n does is it's actually a special character, so Python is going to recognize that and know that it's not just, you know, some more characters in the string. Uh, remember the backslash, usually it just ignores the next character but backslash n, the n is very, very special because it stands for new line in this particular case. So when you type backslash n, it means new line. So when we go and run this, I haven't run it yet, have I? So when we go and run this, you can see that it's now asking for an input on a new line. So that's really kind of a neat sort of thing to know. You might end up using that quite a bit. It's just very... A uh, useful thing to note because it allows you to sort of separate those inputs. And now I'm going to go ahead and do that for the other two variables as well. Um, in fact, I'm just going to copy and paste this because there's no point in typing it out again. Uh, and then we can just change it. So this one's height in centimeters, and this one is age in years, just to be explicit. It's always good to be explicit when you're programming. Um, so now you, you can see that when we run it, uh, the new line is going to separate it quite nicely. Um, so weight in kilograms, about 80, 185, and age in years, I'm 18 years old. So that gives us 1,970 again, which is what we'd expect. So the other thing that I want to touch upon is comments, because the program that we've written at the moment is a good program uh, because it solves you know, the problem that we want to try to solve. It, it does the calculation correctly. Um, but there's a few things that I want to clarify, and it should be explicit in your program what each part of the program does. Uh, rather than implicit, that's always a really good mentality to have when you're programming. So I'm going to use what's called a comment, and the symbol for that in Python is a hash. Um, so you can type in a hash, and then you can basically say anything, and Python is just going to completely ignore it. But yeah, that's the a name, the name for the equation. Uh, this is also for males, so just bear that in mind, because the female version of this equation is going to have slightly different values, I think you add a different amount here or, or something similar. Yeah, so there's a couple of variations for that depending on your gender. So we're making pretty good progress with this Python application at the moment, but uh, there's still a few more things that I'd like to do, and the next one is incorporating logic, and how we're going to use that is using what's called if statements. So, you know, you can say if this, then do that, or, you know, if this, do something else. So they're very, very powerful and they're used extensively almost all the time um, in the industry. So it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty useful thing to know and it's gonna, you know, just add that sort of next level of complexity to this application and just, you know, advance your knowledge in Python because as soon as you can start to incorporate logic in Python, it gives you a lot more freedom to be able to do whatever you want to do in Python. Uh, and even though this is, you know, this program is quite a cool example at the moment, it can certainly be made better using a bit more uh, logic using if statements. 